Hi and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, for taking time out of your day, for trusting in me to help you up, help you up level your family's health. I absolutely understand how valuable your time is and I promise that I will give you some actionable steps that will help you take those, those um, steps to help your family's health. I'm going to go ahead and get right into sharing the screen so that we can get into the, the presentation. It's about 45 minutes long, and, um, but I, I promise to make it worth your while. So this is how to grow a healthy family. I've got five strategies for you to help you reclaim your family's health. Are you sick of having sick kids? I'm Nanette, I'm a mom on a mission to help other families. And why is that? Because I had some serious struggles with my family. And that's what I want to, to that's how, why I wanna help you and help others. To tell you a little bit about my story, in 2012, I woke up to the fact that my family was in a health crisis. So my husband had issues, I had issues. It was until my kids started having issues, that's when the mama bear in me really took over and I, I had to get to the root cause of these issues. So I researched, I learned, I took classes, I got certifications, I had successes, I had failures, but I was able to help my family either overcome or significantly improve all of these conditions, type two diabetes, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I just got rechecked on that a couple months ago and I'm in total remission on that. Leaky gut, anxiety, insomnia, ADD, allergies, food sensitivity, the, the list was long. And why am I telling you this? Because I want you to see that you, yes, you can also get your family to the other side of whatever challenges you may be experiencing. Like I said, we're gonna be about 45 minutes together. There's going to be lots of great info, so eliminate distractions as best you can and take some notes. This, this video will help you if you can no longer look the other way when it comes to your family's health, and that's where, that's where I came from. You can't ignore your, in, your intuition anymore. You know there's a better way. You know you need to make changes to your family's nutrition lifestyle, but you need help. Literally, it took me years to learn this, and what I'm putting together for you if you really get after it, you can, you can implement all this within 10 weeks. Some may take longer, some may be quicker, depending on where you are, but you absolutely can do it. Know, know, you know that change is hard, but if you're ready, we can absolutely do this. And you got to stay tough through this as well when your family, when the changes are hard for your family, because change is hard for everybody. And when you start pulling out different, different, different things, it, is, it, it, might, it might cause some disruption. But I'll help you, I'll help you through that as well. This is not for everyone. You've really got to be ready to put in the work to make the changes. You have to be ready and willing to change and serious about your results. So our goal today is to change your mindset and relationship with food, to learn how to feed your family delicious, nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory food that will support long-term health. You can absolutely do this. A lot of times people think health, eating healthy is not delicious. It absolutely is delicious. And I'll explain that to you as we get further along as well. Our goal is to help you understand the, the, the importance of sleep and stress in everybody's health journey. You can be the healthiest person in the world, eat healthy exercise, but if you're not sleeping, you're really not going to experience that true health that, that, that is your birthright. We're going to talk about movement versus exercise how play sunshine brain fitness will level up your life and we're going to talk a little bit about intermittent fasting and ketosis as well i am strictly here to help you today there's nothing for sale i just want to share with you what it what it took me years and years to learn stay with me to the end and as a special thanks i'll share with you my kitchen cleanse and restore guide what that is it's a pdf that has all the must-haves and all the should nots for your kitchen just so that you're set up and ready to go for any meal, any snack. You've got all the good stuff on hand so that you can produce those for everyone. Uh, it is a step-by-step -step and, I'll, and it'll walk, I'll walk you through it as well. So sadly, this is the new normal. I posted a video several months ago on my website that was a, a scene looking down a New, York, a New York City street in the early 1900s. And every person in that shot, and there were many of them, were lean, and tall and had great postures. You didn't see people built like this. And this was less than 100 years ago. So something has changed. And I want to help you process all that so that you can get your family where you needed to get them. A couple of stats for you. The USA 
spends more on healthcare than any other country in the world. I think most people know that, but what we don't know is that we're 69th in life expectancy, seventh in cancer, first in obesity, 33% of us are diabetic or pre-diabetic, and most don't even know it. And autism is up from one in 10,000, and this was in 1980. Can you believe that? Today, it's one in 40. And I just updated the slide a few weeks ago because I saw new stats come out. So there is a problem with, with, with what we're doing to our bodies, and we've got to change if we're gonna, if we're gonna get healthy again. So these, these are horrifying and it, it's, nobody's going to do this for you except yourself. So you have got to take the responsibility to learn how to, to get your family healthy. Uh, I'm guessing that you want a family with strong immune systems and strength and stamina, healthy body weights, high energy levels, controlled sugar cravings, diversified palates. That's a big one I hear that people can't get their kids to eat anything and we will work through that as well. We want them to have great focus, clear, healthy skin, just overall whole body wellness. And the problem is that that may not be the case. Maybe your kids get sicker than they sh more than they should or aren't at healthy body weights. I had one who was really underweight that we've, that we've been working with to get her body, body weight right. Maybe they want to sit in front of the TV and play video games rather than go outside. I heard a statistic recently where uh, it said that American children spend less time outside than prison inmates do. Think about that. We've got to get our kids outside. Many of them prefer sweets over vegetables or picky eaters, struggle to concentrate, shows uh, their skin showing poor si uh, signs of poor nutrition or food sensitivities. Your skin is going to show pretty quick when you've got a problem going on. I've been there and once we embrace the primal, sometimes known as ancestral lifestyle, and incorporated mindset, nutrition, movement, and lifestyle changes, everything changed for us. It wasn't easy. I'm not going to lie to you about that, but not one of us would go back, not even my kids. My kids are now 16 and 17, and they've learned how to make healthy choices for themselves. They, and they know how to listen to their body. They get it. In the beginning, I did the majority of the planning, shopping, cooking, just because it was easier that way, because I knew the, where, where I was headed, what I was trying to do. So I took over all that. Now, everybody, I can send my 17 year old grocery shopping. My husband does grocery shopping and we're all on board. So everybody understands you know, what, what it is that we will and will not bring into our kitchen. Baby steps, love and patience really helped the transition. We learned about sleep and stress management, how they aren't just guilty pleasures, but crucial aspects of health. And we learned how to achieve fitness through movement, sprinting, and body weight exercise. Don't let that, don't let that scare you. It's, it's much easier than you may think. We learned sunshine and fresh air are necessary. We learned to reduce our chemical load in our home so that our bodies can focus on healing versus constantly having to unload toxins. Today, we feel great. People, people noticed. People started asking questions. So that's how I ended up going down the rabbit hole and uh, became a primal health coach. So what is primal living? Primal means basic, essential, fundamental, vital. I got those right out of the dictionary. For many, primal evokes images of a caveman, right? I'm not going to ask you to go back that far, but consider putting everything to the great, great, great grandmother test. If they didn't eat it or do it, maybe we should think about where we are. And we're not going to look at everything that way because obviously lifestyles are different, but we are going to put things to that test. Primal living is about embracing the, ancestors, the, the lifestyle that our ancestors lived. It's not a fad. It's not a diet. It is the most natural way for us to live. And humans have been living this way for many thousands of years. Okay, consider how your great-great-great-grandparents died. Mostly it was old age or accident. Think of the lifestyle diseases today. 60% of deaths today are from lifestyle diseases. And if what that means basically is choices that we make. So heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, Alzheimer's, even suicide. And that is not 100% how they, how they died, but it was such a lower prevalence than you see today. So there's the, the changes that we're making in our lifestyle is what's bringing this on to us. Lifestyles are defined as diseases. I, I said that. So it, it's time for our life to live our lives differently. First, I think we should start about understanding who we are. So these men are perfect human design, strong, 
lean, agile. These men didn't have processed foods. They didn't go to a gym. And apparently they had much more leisure time than we have today. Um, but this is much different, right, than the new normal we saw earlier. This is the old normal. They're thriving, living in the environment that our bodies were designed to live in. So what happened? The evolutionary pressure is off, right? We don't have to try not to die. That, 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 that new normal person we saw earlier would probably die, yes, because they can't, couldn't outrun a saber-toothed tiger. They couldn't, they, they can draw, get in their car and go to McDonald's to get food versus having to try to go out and forage for it or, or fight for it. So that is part of the problem that we don't have to not die anymore. We don't have to fight for our lives like we used to. The agricultural revolution, yes, was a great thing in some aspects. It did keep people from starving, but it is far, the, the, it's far from the ideal food. High yield, so it was fast, it was cheap, and it was easy. A quote from Dr. Jared Diamond, recent discoveries suggest that the adoption of agriculture, supposedly our most decisive step towards a better life, was in many ways a catastrophe, catastrophe from which we have never recovered. This is insulin, the infinite loop of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is when you, you, when you, when you get hungry, it's just not, it's not just a normal hunger, like, hey, I need to get something to eat. You get hangry, and I see that all the time, like, ah, oh, you get tense, uptight. So hangry is just basically a combination between hungry and angry. So what do you do? You, you, you eat something, and it's typically a high-carb thing or a high-sugar thing, which causes your body to secrete insulin. Your cells resist this insulin because they're already full, and then the sugar stores as fat. Your cells are still unfed, so you go back right back to that hangry again. So it's just an infinite loop, and, and that's where people, a lot of times people are like, I can't, I, 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 there's no way I could go that, you know, five hours with, with, without eating, or there's no way. There is a way, it's just, we gotta just change our body and, and it, it's used to this. And once you get it past that, you absolutely are gonna be able to make changes. These are some of the lifestyles that we're up against. We're busy, blue light, the, the lights that are in your offices or your schools, those are very disruptive to your circadian rhythm, especially at night. Then you've got your toxic load, you're not sleeping right, you're overtraining, social connections are not like they used to be, stress, the, the, the list is long. Okay, so that's where we are. So now what? First, we have to address our mindset because if the mindset's not right, if you think that you can't make these changes, you're probably going to be right. <laughs> You've heard the saying, if you think you will, you're right. If you think you won't, you're right. Mindset is the established set of attitudes held by someone. It's simply how we filter our information. So here's some, some mindset shifts that, that, that I would like you to think about. First of all, be grateful. Be grateful for delicious and healthy food, for, for all the choices that we have, and for all of the hands that touched it. Be mindful as you eat. Slow down. Enjoy your food. That, that, that's a hard one. That's a hard one for me. I have to sometimes remind myself just to chill out and slow down. Eat intuitively. Pay attention to how you feel and listen to your body. We don't do that anymore. I'm working with a, a client who is like, she's like, when I eat something that, that I used to eat and I didn't really pay attention to my body, now it's like my body's like, you know what? That didn't feel good. I don't feel good anymore. And I think it's just, it's just conditioning. I hear people say all the time when they eat something or drink something they shouldn't, they're like, oh, I'm going to pay for this tomorrow. Well, don't do that to yourself because you're making your body work hard to get rid of something that's not good for it. Don't diet because this is not a diet. Just make the best choices possible to nourish your body say, say no thank you versus I can't this was really helpful with my kids when they were younger and we were making changes if they if there was going to be a party or something they were going to I would try to first of all fill them up before I took them and then I would send them with a treat of some sort and then instead of saying I can't because that's what they did in the beginning well I can't have that cookie or I can't have that and then the people are like well why well what well you know and it and it kind of stressed them out. So I said, you know what, just tell them that no, thank you, you don't want one. And when they started doing that, the question, the question stopped. And if you make a bad choice, you know what, enjoy it. 
right? If you're going to do something that you know you're not going to feel good about later, that's okay. You're making the choice to do it. Enjoy it. Learn. Love yourself. Listen to your body. But don't shame. Shame is a really dangerous emotion. Bring more like-minded people into your circle. And that will happen naturally as you go through this because you're going you're gonna to attract that kind of people. And, and, and maybe some friendships fall off. And we did have a little bit of that too, where people were not interested in the lifestyle choices that we were making. And yes, your family will love the new lifestyle. Believe it. I, I've seen it too many times. Um, believe it. All right, here it is in five steps to reclaim your family's health. The first step is to eliminate grains, legumes, sugar, and industrial oils. And we will go through all of these in detail. So if you have questions, um, hopefully I'll answer them all. Develop a good sleep routine and take steps to manage stress. Move frequently at a slow pace, lift heavy things and sprint once in a while. Level up with intermittent fasting and possibly ketosis and optimize your life with sunlight, play, and brain fitness. <clears throat> Eat like your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. <laughs> okay, first step, eliminating grains, legumes, sugar, and industrial oils. This is absolutely the most difficult change. So this is the one that, you know, if you can make, we'll talk about how you can make changes that your family won't even notice and you're going to be doing a lot for their health. So we'll go through that, but it, it is, it is tough because you're used to doing things the way that you've done them for so many years. And now you're going to be looking at trying to do something different. And these are highly, highly addictive foods. And you, you may experience legitimate withdrawals for real. I see people go through this and they think that what they're doing is hurting their body. I'm like, it's your body. Your body is going to rebel because it wants that sugar. It wants those carbs. And when you take them away, it's going to, you're not going to feel good about it. But once you get through the other side, Trust that it's going to be, your, your life is going to be changed forever. You'll get through it. You'll be amazed at your energy level and your decreased inflammation. Fat is your body's preferred fuel source, not carbs. So what has happened is <clears throat> we, we took the advice of you know, eating you know, five times a day, eating big meals, big breakfast, and then snacks in between. So your body is constantly being fed, whether it's car. I mean, you're, you're always, you're getting your protein, your carbs, your fat, but Carbs are the first thing to burn. So when you're constantly eating, you're constantly giving body that your body the energy. So it never has to turn back and rely on the fat. So that's a process, that, a change that your body will go through. And once you do, it's, it's called um, uh, metabolic flexibility. And once your body goes through that, you, you'll, the cravings will be gone. The, the, the hangry is going to be gone, all that intensity. So your body is made to burn both carbs and fat. So when the carbs are burned, they're, they burn through that fast first, and then it'll, they'll, it'll go through burning the fat. And if you've got dietary fat, fat, it'll burn that first. If it doesn't have any dietary fat, there's fat on your body. Even lean people have fat on their body that your body can utilize for fuel. So your body will, has the flexibility to switch back and forth. And let's say that you have a high carb meal the next day. It's okay. Once you're, once you've got this flexibility, it's okay. The next day your body's like, okay, well, I'm not getting that now. So I'm going to go back to my fat. And it, it is absolutely um, a scientific fact that this is how your body works. Okay. So <clears throat> what do we eat instead of grains, instead of corn? And that's a hard one because corn is everywhere in everything. But if you can Wean out the weed out the corn, rice, wheat, rye, millet, barley, yes, even whole grains, processed high carb foods for sure. Nobody should be eating that stuff. Instead, what do you eat? You can eat coconut products for for your your flowers. You can eat nut and seed products. There's almond flour, coconut flour, seed flour. There's lots of there's lots of options out there now. And then of course, vegetables. That's those are your your good carbs. Legumes. Legumes are less, less objectionable, ob, objectionable than grains, but still contain anti-nutrients. They're unnecessary and counterproductive. So I advise that you eliminate these in the beginning until you get your, your bodies set to where you want them. And this can be potentially reintroduced at a later time, but on a, on a pretty limited basis. Not, you don't need to be eating legumes every single day. 
And when you do eat them, you need to make sure that they're processed correctly. They need to either be sprouted, soaked, fermented. That's how our ancestors ate, right? Everything was, was fermented or sprouted or soaked. What that's doing is it's starting the digestive process of these so that your body can process it a little more easily. So instead of these, and, and, and peanuts are a legume as well. So what do you eat? Again, with the, with the vegetables, just introduce more vegetables into your diet. Sugar, <clears throat> instead of brown sugar, cane sugar, raw sugar, powder sugar, artificial sweeteners, absolutely get those out of your diet completely. There's nothing good about artificial sweeteners. Your body does not know what to do with those. And even agave and the purpose, the reason for the agave is because of the way that it's processed. So what do you eat? Again, with coconut, coconut butter. If you've never had coconut butter, it's delicious. When we were going through the getting off of the, the sugar and the carbs originally, we had coconut butter in the house and you can make it by blending it up in a high, high power blender or you can buy it. It's called manna and it's so delicious and sweet. Get a spoonful of that and it's going to help you get through that, that craving. There's coconut flakes, there's coconut sugar. You've got your fruit. You want to try to stick with the lower glycemic index fruit if you can. That's your berries and your citrus, but fruit is absolutely healthy for you. Just in moderation, of course. You've got dark chocolate. Look for uh, 75 to 80% uh, concentration if you can. And then honey, local raw honey is best, and molasses. So those are some options for sweeteners for you. The oils. <clears throat> if you do nothing else but this one step, this is going to help you a whole lot. Partially hydro hydrogenated oils, polyunsaturated vegetables or seed oils, buttery spreads, margarine, vegetable shortening. These are wreaking havoc on your health. Your body does not know what to do with them. Take a cup of, or not even a cup, put some vegetable oil on your porch. Nothing's going to touch it. No animal, no bug because it's not food and your body doesn't know what to do with it. So you know what it does? It, it, it stores it, it hides it because it doesn't know how to process it. Get the, throw those away, all of it. <laughs> so what do you eat? Instead, uh, extra virgin olive oil is great for eating. It's not great for cooking because it has a, a low smoke point. So if you're like doing some light cooking, or maybe like making, you know, it, it, you just don't want to get it at a very high temperature. High temperature oils that are good, avocado oil, coconut oil. I don't use coconut oil for everything because some things don't taste as good with it because it might have that bit of a flavor. But I, I use it for a lot of things, but I don't typically like cook, cook that much with it. For baking, I will. Grass-fed butter is great. Ghee or animal fats. You've got your, your, your lard, your um, tallow. Duck fat is really, really good. It's a little expensive but it's really good. So yes, these oils are more expensive than the other ones, but think about what they're doing to your health. And, and if, if you can't afford the other ones, just don't eat those. Just don't eat food with oils in them because it is one of the worst things you can do for your body. This is the USDA food pyramid. Uh, one, one of many versions. This one came out in, nine, well, the original one came out in 1992. This version came out in 2015. And you can see on the bottom that it's the agricultural commodities are, are, are featured prominently. So that's, you know, that's all your, your, your grains and your sugars and, uh, and then fat and protein continue to be discouraged, which is a shame, right? Because, you know, they're forever and ever low fat, low fat, high carb. And science has proven out that, that fact that, it, that that's not uh, good for us anymore. 1992 is when the food pyramid came out. Look at what else happened in 1992. Our obesity statistics shot up. Here's 1990 right here. And this is where we are today. And it continues to go up. And it's not going to stop unless, uh, unless we change, unless we make some changes. This is the primal blueprint pyramid. And it, I hope that you cannot see this. Uh, I'm not sure why that's showing up. Um, okay. The vegetables are, are, are the base of your pyramid. So colorful, locally grown, organic. There's some that are important to eat organic. There's some that are not as important. If you're not familiar with um, ewg.org, 
that's environmental working group, they have a, a clean 15 list and a dirty dozen list. So if there's a produce on the dirty dozen list and I cannot find it organic, I do not buy it because those are the most um, toxic foods out there. And then they've got the clean 15 list that tells you that these, you know, these are okay if they're not organic. So try to eat, eat that way. And, and, and seasonal is best as well because you're going to be able to find the, the vegetables that are in season in your grocery store. For example, if you're eating blueberries in, in February, they're probably being flown in from another country. So it's, for one, it's, you don't know where they've been, what they've been treated with. So it's best just to eat seasonally, locally, organic as much as possible. You've got your, uh, your, your meat, fish, fowl, and, and eggs. Again, if you can, as much local pasture raised as possible. Your, your healthy fats, your moderation foods being your fruit, your high fat dairy. If you're going to eat dairy, don't go for the low fat because when you go for the low fat, they're taking the fat out, but they're putting chemicals in to make it taste good, right? And then you've got your supplements and your herbs and spices. This is just, uh, I am a member of a CSA and this was one of my hauls one day. So I took a picture of it. I thought it was so pretty. So a CSA is when you're like, it's a community supported agriculture where you pay a certain amount every month and then you go pick up whatever it is that they have. And you don't ever know what it is, but it's fun because it helps you experiment with things that you may not be familiar with. This was a, this was a fun, um, shoot, I can't think of the name of it now, but it's like a, a cauliflower kind of. So it's fun to, to research new, new recipes and, and play with new food. So that is your first step. And when you successfully do this step, it's going to make the largest impact on your health. These, these are the, the best steps that you can start with. You'll get control of your cravings. You'll learn, your body's going to learn how to process, use fat as well as carbs for fuel. And you're going to experience some great energy, clearer head, possibly a reduction in your abdominal circumference as well. Okay, step two, develop a good sleep routine. Take steps to manage stress. These two areas along with good nutrition will help you really maximize your results. Um, optimize immune brain and endocrine functions, aligning your circadian rhythm with the sun. You aren't always in control of your stress, but you are in control of how you react to it. That was a big one for me. A good night's sleep starts as soon as you wake up. <clears throat> Morning sunlight exposure resets your internal body clock. This is a good thing to remember when you're traveling as well and you're crossing time zones. No matter where you are, or what you're doing, get up in the morning, expose yourself to that morning sunlight, and that's gonna help your body reset. Okay, it's morning time, it's time for me to get up and, and wake up. Develop a bedtime routine whether it's reading a book, taking a bath, taking a stroll, whatever. If you do this routine on a regular basis, your body's going to go, okay, it's time for me to start producing melatonin. I know it's almost time for bed. Avoid excessive artificial light and digital stimulation after dark as much as you can. It's very hard today. But think about um, the, the blue in the morning, the sun, when you wake up, the sun has is, is got a higher concentrate of the blue light, which is the wake up, let's go. And then as the sun starts to go down and it gets a, a, a higher concentration of the red light, which is telling your body that it is time to go to bed. And think about how our ancestors had light at night. It was probably with fire or candles. I have these, these lava lamps in our room, so that's what we try to use. And, and a couple of little tricks for you as well. I spend a lot of time on a computer and sometimes I'm doing it later than I want to. But this is something that you can install on everybody's laptops, phones, whatever. It's called F.Lux. There's a couple other ones out there, but that's the one that we use. What that does is it takes the, the blue lights. You have to put in your, your, your time zone, and then it'll take the blue lights out as you start getting into the evening hours so that it doesn't disrupt your, your melatonin production because that's telling your body to wake up, and we don't want you to wake up. And there's also blue blocking glasses that you can get, and these used to be really expensive when they first came out. Now they're cheap. I bought my daughter a pair not too long ago. I think they were $24. So you wear these glasses and it just filters out that blue light. Stress. <clears throat> Chronic stress wreaks havoc on your sympathetic nervous system, causing hormonal imbalances, sugar cravings, sleep disturbances, low energy levels, trouble losing weight. So there's stress, right? And stress is good. Stress can be life-saving, but what happened is, is the stress that we used to have. We used to have stress and then it was over and then we would come back, right? We would come back to our, our homeostasis, our normal 
our normal selves. But today, stress is constant, right? You've got you've got deadlines and phones and emails and uh, there's there's so much going on that we are constantly stressed out. So our bodies never have that time to unwind. So you you really have to think about how you're going to bring that down. Yoga, meditation, <clears throat> walking outside in the fresh air, reading, grounding. If you don't know what grounding is, it's basically just touching the earth. Get barefooted, sit in the lawn, and that just helps your body release those those um, positive ions. Um, I got some grounding mats for our, our beds last year so that we all sleep on them. So that just helps us like while we're sleeping, we're also grounding. And then there's EFT, emotional freedom technique. If you don't know about that research, it is, it's, it's a great way to help bring yourself back to balance up, out that parathet, para, parasympathetic nervous system. Slow life down, easier said than done. Yes. <laughs> And when you successfully <clears throat> calibrate your, your sleep and, and minimize your stress, you're going to feel mentally and physically refreshed. You're going to be more ready to face the day. Uh, you'll be able to achieve your basic fitness goals, and you're, you're just going to look and feel better. All right, ready for step three? Move frequently at a slow pace, lift heavy things, and sprint once in a while. Move your body frequently. You cannot out-exercise a sedentary lifestyle. Have you heard, um, I'm hearing a lot lately, that sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is really bad for you. So if you sit for eight to 10 hours a day and then get up and go to a gym and pound out an hour workout, that's great, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna undo the damage that you did sitting down all day. So you've got to figure out ways to get up and, and move. Lift weights, whether it's body weight or, or other weights for lean muscle mass and to metabolize fat. Sprint workouts can be done in such a short period of time, and we'll talk about that. <clears throat> so the, the move in frequently and the slow pace, that is basically walking, you know, hiking, yoga, tai chi, dance, anything that it, it, is at a comfortable heart rate, two to five hours a week. So you're not even talking an hour a day. Take a, a, I mean, an, hour walk, an hour walk one day, maybe do a 30-minute yoga the next day. So it will add up really quick. But this is pretty light, easy going. So the heart rate that you're targeting here is 180 minus your age. I had to learn to slow this down a little bit because this is just your movement, getting you up and around and moving your body. But this is not the, the, the workout or the exercise where you're trying to get your heart rate up real high. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Overly stressful workouts lead to burnout, in injury, increased calorie intake, and accelerated aging. I was one of those that was killing myself in a gym all the time. Because I thought that would help my stress or help my, my body, whatever. But it, it was really, it was aging me and it was not helping my situation at all. <clears throat> Lift heavy things. With this, you want to go big or go home. In other words, do, do it until till the muscle fatigue or failure if you've got that that level of fitness this is only you only need to do this a couple of times a week i, I would recommend two times a week 10 to 30 minutes um 20 minutes whatever just brief intense functional strength training session so you're doing squats push-ups pull-ups planks mountain climbers those kinds of things and that will really get those muscles burning Full body movement support muscle development and delay aging. Sprint. I love my sprint days. I, it makes me feel so good and it's so quick. Your exercise is over for the day. And this only needs to be done like once every seven to 10 days. I usually do it on Sunday. That's usually my sprint day. But this is great. And this is going all out as much as you can with your getting your heart rate as high as you can, like where you, you're, you're, you would be stressed to, to even have a conversation. But it's like brief bout. So I have a Tabata app on my phone and I, I'll walk around the block, turn on my app and it's got me sprinting as fast as I can and then stopping. And I do that for eight cycles. You can do it for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then slow down for 20 or 30 or whatever your body, whatever, whatever, wherever you are in your, in your health. When I first started doing these sprints, I would do four cycles and I'm up to eight. And it's really all that you need to do. But the whole chronic, chronic cardio, that, uh, that many people do, you think if you log those hours on the, on the bicycle or the, or the treadmill or you're out running all the time, it's, 
it's not the best thing in the world for you. It, it, it is good, but to do it all the time is not good. It, it's, it's stress on your body. You want that stress on your body so that your body comes back bigger, you know, better and stronger, but the constant, constant stress, it's, it's not good for your body. This is the primal blueprint fitness pyramid. So you see the base of the pyramid is, is, is your movement. So there's your, your, your four or five hours of movement every week. And then you've got your lift heavy things a couple times a week for 10 to 30 minutes. And then you've got your sprints once every week or 10 days. And of course you're playing, you're sleeping, relaxing, recovering. So this is a much, <clears throat> I think a much more doable workout regimen because it's really can be implemented into your everyday life. And you can do most of these things just about anywhere. When you move, lift, and sprint, you delay aging, preserve lean muscle mass, optimize your gene expression, increase fat metabolism, improve your athletic ability, of course, and it, and it only takes a few hours a week. Step four, level up with intermittent fasting and ketosis. Um, going back, sorry, going back to, to the, the movement a little bit. I've got some things in my office that help me because I do spend a lot of time in my office and it helps me like if I've been working for a while, I, I got to stop. I got to stop and move or do something. Then I use this, this cabinet behind me as a stand-up desk. So I'll take my laptop and swing it over there so that I can stand up. I have a pull-up bar in my doorway. I've got some exercise balls. I've got some kettlebells. I've got some dumbbells. You, of course, you can go outside and run. I have a rebounder, run around, whatever it is, but you've got to break out when you break out of just sitting or be even standing all the time. You got to, you got to move your body. <clears throat> Intermittent fasting in ketosis. You're, there, you hear about this more and more today than, than we did a couple of years ago. This is not going to be for everybody, but I do want to talk to you about it. This is a step that you want to take once you're fat adapted, which means that once your body can, has that metabolic flexibility where it can go back and forth to burning carbs and fat, that's when these two things can, can play a good role for you. Eat when you're hungry. A lot of us eat because it's breakfast time, it's dinner time, it's after school, so we're having a snack. Listen to your body, ask yourself, am I really hungry? Ask your kids, are you really hungry? A lot of times they're gonna be. And another thing I hear from parents a lot is that my kids are always hungry. I give them a snack and then 10 minutes later, they're like wanting something else to eat. And I ask, well, what are you feeding them? Well, maybe an orange. You know, an orange is great, but if you don't get, if you don't balance it out, that's a carb intake. They need some fat to go with it and they need some protein to go with it. So give them an orange and a handful of, of almonds or an orange and a, a, a grass-fed beef stick or something. And that's going to help balance that snack outs because that, that, that orange is going to be gone in minutes. Your, their body will burn that up really fast. So think about those things when you're coming up with the, with the snacks and the food as well. You want to try to limit, limit your carbohydrate intake to 150 grams or less. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. <clears throat> Ketones are an internally manufactured energy source that the body burns in the same manner as glucose, but cleaner. So it has less waste, less free radicals. And it, it's not for everyone. The intermittent fasting, I think everyone can do in one manner or another, but ketosis is not for everyone. I, I will play with it a little bit, but I go in and out of it. I don't stay there for, for, for like weeks at a time. I might go there for a few days, like where I'm eating really low carb, but um, everybody's body handles that differently. So what is intermittent fasting? You're eating in a compressed wi wi eating window. For example, if you eat dinner at seven o'clock and you don't eat breakfast again till seven o'clock, that's your 12, you're eating in a 12 hour window. So you want to try to grow that window as you can. So if you eat dinner at seven, maybe don't eat till eight and then go to nine, 10, 11. I typically eat around seven and I don't usually eat, break my fast until like maybe 11 or 12. It just depends on what I did the night before or if I'm real active that morning and I don't, I don't push it and I don't not eat because, oh, I can't eat. It's not 11. I listen to my body when I'm hungry, I eat but you want to try to grow that window as you can. No suffering. When insulin production is moderated and fat metabolism is optimized, your hunger is greatly reduced. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't even eaten anything. 
that it, because your body is not doing that. Wow, I got I got to have food. It, it really does change your metabolism. And fasted exercise is great. I typically work fat, work out fasted. Like I'll get up in the morning before I eat. I'll have um, I'll, usually I'll have like a little sole water with the lemon squeeze in it, and <clears throat> then I'll go do whatever exercise I'm doing for the day. And of course, this will vary also based on your activity level. This is a uh, the carbohydrate curve. So if you look at this, it if you look at the danger zone, that's anybody eating over 300 grams of carbs. And that can add up so fast, you would not be not believe it. But um, most Americans are in between 150 and 300, which is, is weight gain. The goal where I told you to start with 150 or less, that is effortless, effortless weight management. So that's a good place to start. You don't want to go down to 50 below right off the bat because your body is going to rebel against that and it's, you're not going to feel good. So go, you know, start around 150 and then you can work down from there. If you're trying to lose weight, you can go down below 100. If you're trying to go into ketosis, you can go below 50. But I, again, <clears throat> not everybody's great in that, in that 50 or below on a constant basis. So typically, typically around, you know, I always keep myself, my husband is usually tries to stay around 50. I usually try to stay around hundred and the kids are probably around 150 because they, neither one of them need to lose weight. It's just a good, it's just a good weight management or uh, maintenance for them. Fasting and ketosis can optimize your gene expression, increase your human growth hormone, which makes you stronger, healthier, younger, improve your cellular repair, reduce insulin levels, boost metabolism, stabilize weight, improve your triglycerides and cholesterol levels. <clears throat> Before we started doing this, my husband had really high triglycerides. I mean, like really high. They wanted to put them on meds and it's a, a complete non-issue at this point. Step five, sunlight, play, and brain fitness. These factors contribute to health and happiness, as well as improve creativity, relationships, and, and this, this is the quality of life stuff, right? Exercise, fun, and stress management at the same time. <clears throat> this also helps you, helps you with your work, your work play balance. Sunlight, vitamin D via the sun is 10 times superior to diet or supplement. I was reading a, an article the other day where I forget what it was. I think it was like 60 to 70% of Americans are vitamin D deficient. So that's a lot of us, right? If we're not spending time outside or if you've got bad weather going on or winter, depending on where you live, if you are not able to get sun, you probably should supplement. That would be something to talk to your dietitian or, um, or your doctor about, but you, you want to make sure that your, your vitamin D is optimized. You want to expose large skin surfaces to the sun, so like your legs, your arms, your 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 torso, that you know for short increments that don't allow burns. You, you don't want to burn, obviously, and everybody's going to be different. One of my daughters is very fair, and I I have pretty I have olive skin, so I'm pretty pretty dark, and so it takes longer for me to get my vitamin D than it does for her. So everybody's going to be different, and depending on where you live and in the in the weather and everything, so you just have to kind of learn to judge when you're you're you're. You can get flush, but you don't want to get pink. Sunlight is a powerful mood elevating effect too. Anytime somebody's feeling blue or depressed, I'm like, go outside, go outside and sit on the grass with your bare legs and get some sunshine and you're going to feel better. You just, you just absolutely are. Play, balance the stress of modern life with spontaneous, unstructured outdoor activity. Just go play. Assemble a group of friends to play a, a, a game, dodgeball, tag, kickball. The kids today are so, so scheduled. We go to, they, they go to school, then they go a lot of times to an indoor activity, whether it's karate or ballet or whatever. So everything is, is, is structured. You want to allow for that unstructured time. That's where the creativity and the fun and, and, and freedom is. So you need to make sure and encourage that with your kids as well. Play is essential to mental and physical well-being. Brain fitness, brain is a muscle. Use it, exercise it, engage in creative, stimulating intellectual pursuits, puzzles, crosswords, Sudoku, play an instrument, learn a foreign language. I have a friend who's learning how to play the ukulele and she's having the best time with it. 
pick up a new hobby, whatever it is, something that is fun and stimulating. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. I love that George Bernard Shaw quote. <clears throat> Another thing that I, I, I meant to tell you about, about like playing outside and get, you know, getting in the fresh air, my daughters and I will go to our local park here in town and it really, they're really too old to go to this park. So we don't play on the, on the equipment, but there's things that you can do in there. There's these rocks that we can jump up and down on, or we'll do planks on them. We walk around in the trail. It's really pretty. But what I see out there so many times is that the, the moms are out there with their little kids. The kids are playing and the moms are sitting on the bench and they're on their phone or they're talking to each other. And I just want to say, go play with your kids. It'll be great for your relationship too. get up and play. Plus it'll be good for you. And I get that that's the unwind time sometimes as well. That it's your break from your kids, but try it. It's fun. We're at a, at a lake. I got this paddleboard a couple of years ago. So we were at the lake playing with that and we take our kayaks out there and um, get some fresh air. This is the, this is the best way to level up your life for sure. So <clears throat> that's it. That's the five strategies to reclaim your health. Are you ready to maximize your family's health through primal living? You are, you can see it. You're willing to take the steps necessary to ensure your family is healthy, happy, strong, and energetic. Don't be, don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. It's absolutely doable. Um, so we've discussed these, these simple shifts. There's no pills, no potions. Just try it for 30 days. What do you have to lose? Try it for 30 days. At least take some steps like eliminating the oils the, and, and, and the sugar and making those changes because I'm telling you that nobody's going to even notice it. When you're thinking about your recipes, like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I feed my family? A protein and, 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 and a vegetable, meats and vegetables, right? That really, it's that simple. Um, when, when you're in a hurry, it does not take you any longer to go to McDonald's and it takes you to go to a grocery store and grab some stuff for a charcuterie, a charcuterie platter, grab some, some, some meat and some cheese and some olives and some, um, you know, some, some pickles, those kinds of things. And, and that's a great healthy dinner. That's one of our favorites when we're in a hurry and we know we're not gonna have time to cook. And whenever they, you know, the, the, question what's for dinner I say charcuterie player everybody's like yay they love it so you just have to shift your thinking and another thing that I recommend that you do is um, google research your favorite recipes one of our favorite my favorite things I'm a Texas girl and I love a good chicken fried steak and I didn't have one for years because I didn't know how to do it well you can do it in fact I have I have a recipe on my website uh, uh, that, that I've, I've been practiced for years, kind of trying to figure it out, but you can absolutely do a, a healthy chicken fried steak. It just, what kind of oil are you putting it in? What kind of flour are you putting on it? We do mashed cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes. We make a gluten-free gravy. I mean, it, it's delicious. I don't want to eat that very often, but when I do, it's so good. So know that you can make these changes and that you can, that you can get your family through this. Okay, the gift that I promised you, go to yourprimallife.com, that is my website, and you can sign up for that free kitchen cleanse and restore guide, and you'll get it right away. And there's also, um, I recently added a five-day challenge, which is a free challenge that takes you through this, because sometimes people get this guide, and they're like, oh my gosh, how do I start? And the, the, the five-day challenge just takes you through each step one day at a time, so that it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more manageable. But there's, I've got recipes on there, I've got lots of tips. One of, one of the, I have a, I also blog and there's a, an article on there called, uh, my family will never go for that. That's where I send people in the beginning where they're like, how do you get your family to, to eat like this? Cause they'll watch my kids and they're like, oh my gosh, how, how do you get your kids to do this? And this, I talk about how I, how I do it in that article. So there's lots of great info in there. So please use it. There's tons of free resources that can help you. I can I can help if you're in need of more personal attention. I also have some, I have a 10 weeks to help your family one-on-one -on -one coaching program that I offer, but there's, and there's a free set, a growing a healthy family session. If you want to talk about the possibility of working together, but regardless of that, there's lots of stuff on that website that can, that can help you and your family. I am completely committed to helping families. Um, so my hope is that you will implement many of the, implement many of the things that you learned 
to impact your family because this really is just back to basics, natural living. It's nothing fancy, nothing unusual, nothing that might be dangerous. It's all just getting back to nature. Love this quote by Joyce Meyer. I believe that the greatest gift you can give your family and the world is a healthy you. And another thing to keep in mind is that your health is passed down two generations. So think about that. You're setting your kids up. You're setting your grandkids up. You're setting up your whole family for health and success. Um, that This is the where you can apply for that free growing healthy family session or primallife.com slash apply. If you go to my website, there's also ways to reach out to me. There's a contact me button, et cetera. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope that this was great for you. I hope that this helped you. If I can support any way, please let me know. And I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks.